Hey everybody, sorry about that. The live feed uh, here at the house <laughs> failed. All this technology I have in the house and uh, you know, it's, life's imperfect. So, but I'm coming back at you because I never give up. This is my third video for the day. I feel a little bad that I was offline for about a week traveling in the Middle East and I couldn't talk to you when I was there. So, I, but I will be doing a whole series on unpacking the Middle East. Is John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and CEO of Operation Hope, the only national network, uh, financial services network for the poor, the underserved, and the struggling middle class. Those folks with too much months at the end of their money. I just did a video uh, that the feed uh, uh, stopped in the middle of the video, or actually toward the end, uh, a business plan for black America. So if you want me to finish that in a part two uh, within the next week or so, just put in the comments and I will. Um, if you look at the map behind me, it's uh, where I've traveled around the world. Uh, hundred, I can't even put all the cities here, but uh, it's about a hundred countries where I've traveled to. Uh, but probably the most compelling and amazing experience I had um, anywhere that really touched my soul was in an inner city school in Oakland, California. I was teaching a course in Dignity, so I'm the co-founder of Global Dignity with the Crown Prince of Norway and Pekka Himana, Professor Pekka Himana of Finland, Ambassador Andrew Young. He's telling me, slow down, John. You know what you're saying. You're so excited about it, but you talk too fast. You guys need to tell me, slow down, John. I've got so much I want to give you, so I apologize. I'm trying to get a lot of information in a little bit of time. So I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Operation Hope, founder and CEO of Operation Hope, founder and CEO of Brian Group Ventures, author of How the Poor Can Save Capitalism, Rebuilding the Path of the Middle Class, and I love leadership, and a co-founder of Global Dignity and a Gallup Hope Index, and these are sort of my legacy uh, pieces. And so Global Dignity was in Oakland, California schools. And one of the reasons I keep telling my brothers to not be angry, not be upset, is that it's not a business plan that works. I'm not telling you don't have a reason to be, I'm saying it doesn't work. And it doesn't work for you. Even you know that thug life ultimately doesn't work. What's an example of that? So I'm in Oakland, California, doing a Global Dignity classroom session but this, but I wanted the whole I wanted the toughest school in Oakland I wanted the toughest kids uh, I wanted to prove that our kids were brilliant and that we could be turned around no matter where we are and what we did I see you signing in Joseph uh, Anderson let's start a black Wall Street seriously of course uh, uh, but it's not exclusion of anybody else it's the inclusion of us I saw test fund signing in um, sharing thank you for sharing knowledge John my pleasure Anthony uh, Thomas when am I coming to Charlotte North Carolina um, when you invite me, when I get invited to come speak there, but we're also going to be opening Hope Insides there. Uh, Talbot, uh, LaShawn, Bradford Crook, yes, slow down. We love your passion, though. <laughs> Thank you. I will slow down. Todd Jackson, good good evening, brother. So I don't know where you're part, you're part of the world this evening. Maybe you're in Africa. Brian Johnson, hey. Justin Mary from Detroit. Mark Lath, hey, we miss you in South Africa. My brother, Mark Lath, I love you, Mark Lath. That's my man from Fantastic Racing. I'm on his racing team. We actually won a race in April. Uh, uh, J Dub, uh, Lexi uh, Emma Ryder, uh, Brian Johnson, were you coming to Akron, Ohio when I get invited? Terrence Brown, this is needed. Thank you. Diane Edwards, Milwaukee, visiting Atlanta in your city. Hey, pro props. Uh, Farm Ross from Memphis. Uh, Val Finn, Latoya Cozy, Latanya Cozy, good afternoon. Thanks for spreading the wisdom. I appreciate that. Need you in D.C. Von Dale Lewis, thank you. I have an office there. Many offices in D.C. I come there often. Okay, I see Alabama, uh, Alabama signing in, Reno signing in. Part two of the Black Business Plan, indeed. Okay, I think that that's a yes. Okay, so let me get into this particular topic. I'm already at three minutes and I haven't started talking yet about this topic. It's so exciting. It's so inspiring to me. So I'm in a school in Oakland, the toughest school in Oakland. I ask not for a classroom. I ask for, and I see other people signing in. I'll come back and acknowledge you. I see, uh, uh, I see uh, this school, and I asked for not a classroom, but the auditorium. I want the auditorium with all of the tough kids. Uh, to prove that our kids are brilliant, as amazing as everybody. Uh, and I never met these kids, they never met me before. So we're in an auditorium, 600 kids. I think it's still on YouTube, by the way, if you want to pull it up. I walk in suited and booted, because we've been making dumb sexy for too long. We've dumbed down and celebrated it. And I think we've got to make smart sexy again. So I, I show up with a suit made by a black entrepreneur that operational put in, 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 in business. I walk in the middle of the auditorium, uh, and everybody, you know, they don't know who I am. So they're looking at me like I'm crazy. I walk in, don't say a word. In the middle of the auditorium, just stand there, my head down. Then I lift my head up. What happened? Complete silence. So they knew 
when somebody was serious about them that they needed to be serious about their lives, they went quiet. I knew I had a, just a few minutes before they were going to turn against me again because the, the, the culture there was about, you know, dumbing down and trying to be cool and trying to impress your friends, which means trying to punk me, the guests. That's okay. So I found the toughest dude in the auditorium. I, you know, you could tell who he is. He's sitting there chilling, you know. The, the uniform, he's got the uniform on, the white t-shirt, the baggy pants, you know, sitting like, you know, yo, 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 what's up, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'll go over to him. I say, hey, man, how you doing? Hey, man, what's up? What's your name? Let's just say his name is Charles. Hey, Char my name is Charles. Hey, man, my name is Charles. In this example, Charles, you're 40 years old. No, man, I'm 17. In this example, you're 40, Charles. You've got a child. You've got a daughter. You're 40. You're Now you're a successful businessman. You've gotten out of school, you went to college, or you became a businessman, or maybe you were an entrepreneur, didn't go to college, but you became an entrepreneur, and now you're, you're successful. You have this mansion, you have, you, you've got a legal life, you're, you're, you're a good guy, you have a daughter. She's 18. Do you love your daughter, Charles? Yeah, man, I love my daughter. I love my daughter, man. If I had a daughter, I'd love her. Okay, cool, great, Charles. Let me ask you a question. Do you really love your daughter? Man, I love my daughter. What would you do for your daughter? I'd die for my daughter, man. I'd do anything for my daughter. Now, by the way, I need permission from you to be candid. I don't, if you're having children with you, uh, cover their ears over a couple of things I'm going to say here. And I'll warn you when I'm about to say it. But I want to tell you exactly what they told me. I hope it's okay with you. So, so Charles, you I mean, I love my daughter. I'd do anything for my daughter. I said, okay, Charles, great. You're successful now. You're 40 years old. You have a mansion. You have a beautiful family. You have your car. You're paying your taxes. You're, you're, you're employing people. You're, you're, you're proud of yourself. Your mother's proud of you. Yeah, man. Got this daughter. She love, you love her. She loves you. Yeah. The knock on the door. You go to the door. Here's the person at the door. Yo, 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 man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He's got gold teeth in his mouth. He's got a tattoo on his neck. Another tattoo on his cheek. He's got another tattoo on his forehead, right? He's, he's got fake gold chains on his neck. He's got a real raggedy white t-shirt. He's got pants that are bagging down to his knees. I don't even know how to keep their pants up. By the way, the reason that they take the bill from you in prison is that you don't uh, uh, commit suicide. It's, oh, it's, it's suicide watch. He's got no shoelaces in his shoes. Why don't they have shoelaces in their shoes in prison? Why they take them from you? So that you don't tie them together and noose yourself because you're on suicide watch. So to have no shoelaces in your shoes and no paint, no uh, belt around your waist is to be a suicide watch victim. This dude is on the front porch, no, no belt, no, no laces, raggedy gold chain, raggedy white shirt, tattoos everywhere, dropped out of college, dropped, I'm sorry, dropped out of high school, uh, no job, uh, criminal record, saying, yo man, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? I wanna marry your daughter, man. I, lo I love your daughter, man. I came here for permission to marry, I want your permission to marry your daughter. So I asked Charles, how do you respond to the young man at your door? This is where I need you to put the, your, the, your hands over your children's ears. He said, man, you better get the F off my porch. I, I, I couldn't say it. But get, a, but get your ass off my porch. You're not marrying my daughter. You ever show up to my, my house again, I'm going to whip your rear end. He said, I'm going to whip your ass. Get, get off my porch. Go on. Get out of here. Don't ever come back here again. Everybody in the auditorium, bravo, fantastic. I look at Charles, bravo, fantastic, Charles. The right response. You love your daughter. Let me ask you a question. Why is it not good enough for your daughter, but it's good enough for you? Boom. Boom. You hear a pin drop in the auditorium. Charles had never thought about it that way. He had never thought about it that way. He's like, yeah, man, that's not good enough for my daughter, and it ain't good enough for me. I want to turn my life around. What do I have to do, man? What do I have to do? Let's get to it. Let's get with it. I then went and finished the rest of the presentation, about 45 minutes. You hear a pin drop the entire session. But who is my greatest protector now? Who is my champion? Who is my protector? Who is my security force? Who policed the whole auditorium? Charles. So if I'm walking down the street in the inner city in, in, in any city in America, and I see a brother running, walking up on me, He's a big brother. He's he's bulky. He's he's thugged out. You know what I'm saying? He's got that look about him. He's, he's looking like he, he'll tear your, your head off 
He's walking on the same path with me on the, the sidewalk, and I'm with him. I'm coming up uh, at him. What do I do? I look, him, I look up a little bit. I look him straight in the eyes. I cock my head just a little bit, 25% uh, smile. Hey, man, what's up? How you doing? He said, hey, man, what's up? Boom. We pass each other on the sidewalk. I get 100 yards away. It's actually happened to me. Another dude's like, hey, man, what's up? What are you doing in this neighborhood? The dude turns around and says, hey, man, leave him alone. He's with me. You see, we have good sense. All that brother wanted was respect and dignity. And then when I gave him the respect that he deserved, I acknowledged him, I saw him. I said, you are somebody. I'm no better than you. You're no better than me. We are the same. We just had a different opportunity in life. Maybe I had the luck of the gene pool. Maybe you didn't. But we are the same, and I acknowledge you. At that point, he was my friend. Both Charles and his brother were redeemed in a moment of respect and dignity. They say in South Africa, Ubuntu. I am me because you are you. Ubuntu. Say that to your children. I am me because you are you. Ubuntu. 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 We're all in this thing together. Even the thug knows that thug life doesn't work. But he doesn't know another way. We've got to be that way. Watch how you live your life. It may be the only Bible anybody else reads. I want you to have a family meeting in your meet in your house every week. Sit down with your kids. Talk about how the light bill gets paid. Talk about how the, the rent gets paid. Talk about how the mortgage gets paid. The stuff don't pay itself. Talk about how you working hard, you know, and, and trying to make a living for them. Talk about how the babysitting, you know, bill gets paid. Talk about how the toothpaste that they use in their mouth gets paid. Because, you know, <laughs> it didn't just show up. You went to the grocery store and pay for it, yes or no. Talk about how uh, the groceries show up in the house, all right? They didn't just show up. Somebody's paying for them. You are working hard trying to take care of them, and they cannot disrespect you in your own house by not going to school, by not taking care of their responsibilities, by not uh, be, uh, doing their homework, by, 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 by staying out too late and not checking with you, by treating you like a friend versus treating you like a parent. Uh, here's a piece of advice for all parents. You want your children to respect you and learn to like you, then to like you and never respect you. Make sure your children respect you and learn to like you, maybe, rather than to like you and never respect you. My mother, Juanita Smith, she didn't play. I, I, I was more afraid of the gangs in my neighborhood. I, mean, I was more afraid of my mother than the gangs in my neighborhood. Let me make that clear. I was more afraid of my mother, Juanita Smith, than the gangs in my neighborhood. My mother made it clear. You disrespect me in my household, I will go pick up the whole tree and whip you. <laughs> okay? And I turned out okay. We're going to be okay. But we got to redeem ourselves. And we have to understand that a saint is a sinner that got up and rainbows only follow storms. And nobody's beyond redemption. Remember that Malcolm X was a ex-con who was in prison and redeemed himself, became one of the most eloquent, brilliant, articulate, smooth, well-rounded world leaders ever to walk the face of the earth and uh, you know we can all learn okay let me see if i can get some comments it's 13 minutes uh, i'm sure you're getting tired of me uh lashawn bradford i hear you today goodwin good example bro you hit the nail on the head we have to unite and respect each other as african americans as black people every black person should respect one another and help each other absolutely mm -hmm. noble paul ba uh, bang uh bum Bala, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. You're doing the right thing to end poverty. Money can't put an end to poverty, but financial literacy, well, well, all that, that plus, you know, knowing who you are. Real poverty is low self-esteem. It's not what people call you, it's what you answer to that's important and, and, and never answer out of your name. That's what that's a quote from Reverend Cecil Chip Murray. My quote is, there's a difference between, between being broke and being poor. Being broke is economic, but being poor is a disabling frame of mind a depressed condition of your spirit, and you must vow never, ever, ever to be poor again. Uh, Fal Finn, you are intelligent. Great lesson to those children. Uh, Texarkana, Texas, you need to hear you speak. Thank you. Pass it on to those you know. Uh, Melissa Marshall, this is classic rap music. Every woman is a bee, but their daughters, we don't see bigger picture. I, uh, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Um, the, the new rap, which calls women bitches and whores and all that, that, that's, that does not honor you. That is not the rap music that, that, that we love so much that talked about our history and our pain and really gave a voice to the voiceless. This new stuff is ridiculous. Um, um, Jay Allen, Wiz Ruler, congrats. Uh, Talbert, you need to come to Beaumont, Texas. Okay, I've been invited. 
Uh, okay, so uh, uh, to, today, we, okay, so a lot of engagement. I'll answer all these offline. Love you much. Let's take our lives back. Even thug life knows that thug life doesn't work. Let's help them redeem themselves. I'll leave you with a quote. Talk without being offensive. Listen without being defensive. And always leave even your adversary with their dignity. Because if you don't, they'll spend the rest of their life trying to make you miserable. Peace out. Love you much.